Hey everybody, and welcome to another video. Today we're going to take a look at Megascan Studio. This is one of the uh, more interesting pieces of software that have released uh, in the la later dates. So what is Megascans? Well, basically, Megascans is a piece of uh, it's a piece of Quixel, which, which you can find at megascans.se. And as you can see, it's a physically based 3D vegetation and surface scan site. So it has a, a lot of uh, surfaces that have been scanned and all the information contained into that uh, surface. Now you can use it and make a lot of different varieties for uh, surfaces as well as entire biomes. All right, so we're going to start by opening up uh, Megascan Studio. So I'm going to try and keep this as introductory as a sort of an introduction video. All right, so first thing you're going to be uh, greeted with something like this, which is the projects. I'm going to click uh, on new. And this is actually an important piece of information you need to put in. The first thing would be just name your project. Uh, let's just go ahead and test. Right. Testing project. And now here's the thing, you need to uh, choose what kind of a ground size you, you will need, want to work on. Uh, don't worry if you like put it on a, something smaller here, like two, by, uh, two meters or five by five, you can change it uh, inside when we start working. So I'm gonna go with the five by five. The working resolution for the textures, we can choose whatever we want. Uh, it can it's going to put a bit of a strain on your uh, GPU while it's rendering if you put it at 4k but I'm gonna leave it in 4k and you need to decide what is your workflow going to be it's either gonna follow the specular uh, workflow which is uh, what you would be using if you are wor uh, working with 3ds max or it's gonna be metalness if you're gonna use PBR uh, textures that is for something uh, like any game engine would use. So for now, I'm going to leave it at specular and click OK. When you first start the project, the first thing you're going to notice is that you have this plane in the middle and pretty much it's quite clean. So here is the first thing you need to know, and that is how to go about and navigate the user interface. But uh, clicking on your mouse wheel, you can pan the view around by holding down Alt. You can click, left click, and zoom around. And while clicking, uh, still holding down Alt, right click will zoom you in and out. So pretty much your standard uh, Maya navigation tools. So if you're a Maya user, you're gonna find it pretty easy. If you're coming out of Max, it's quite easy to get at, uh, accustomed to using it. All right, so once we have this, uh, the only thing that I uh, would like to uh, go and cover is this piece over here, which is basically going to let you choose what kind of an environment you want to use for lighting. So by default, we have Pisa, we have concrete, as you can see, it just changes the background, but it's not very visible now because we have nothing. So let's fix that. So the way that Megascan Studio works is it adds certain layers in which you can change parameters and get a finalized image or a finalized texture. So let's see how that works. Over here, you have the layers portion. Underneath you have add and you have these three buttons. The first one, when you click it, it's going to go over in the browser over here. So basically it, up until now it was the viewport. Then go over to browser and you can select any of the surfaces that you might have here. Now, in case you don't have any surfaces here, what you need to do is go back to Quixel scans and you just can uh, go over to the library and from here you can download some uh, some of the uh, scans over here, but for in order to do that, you need to sign in or uh, sign up, and then you will get credits. You can use those credits to buy certain surfaces that you need. But if you just want to start out and just test it out, go over to the free section 
And from here, you can download some of the surfaces. For example, you have this one, you have all right, this one. So I'm going to click on, on it. It's going to let me choose what is the resolution that I want to download. I can just go and take a 4K. I really don't need 8K. And it's going to give me a workflow for metalness or specular. Since I'm using specular at the moment, I'm going to use specular. It's giving you all the uh, maps that it's going to make. You have the microstructure to roughness or glossiness. We can use any. I can just go glossiness if I wanted to use it for max. And context offline, that's cool. Hit on download. Now hit on save file, click OK. And as soon as it's downloaded, you need to navigate to where you've set up your repository for your um, for your downloads. So here I have it here in Megascans repository in D. So I'm just going to click and copy it here. Now, as soon as I copied the soil mod here, when I go back to Megascan Studio, right away, it shows up right there. All right, so we've, uh, we learned how we can add an extra material here. So let's start and play around with it. So for this, I will, well, I'm going to try and do, let's go with this one. It's a soil, I think. As soon as we click it, we're going to load up the textures and you get something like this right away. What you can see right away is the fact that as soon as we added this, it added an extra layer over here with this soil mud. So now when we click this on the right side, we have some properties that we can change and get a result. So let's go ahead and see. The first thing I'm going to do is like, I'm going to try to rotate it as something like this. So I can see some of the highlights coming from the light. So I can now change the light and see a much more different look that we have here. All right, I'm going to leave it in desert as it's giving me some highlights that I can work with. All right, so first of all, over here you have height noise. This is giving you the option to actually move the surface. So it's, you're introducing a randomized noise filter. So if I zoom out a bit, you're going to be able to see it better. So this is the intensity, so how big it is. So you can go something like this. It's going to be quite, well, rocky or uneven, but maybe this is the type of surface you need. For this, I'm not going to go so extreme. Then you have the second option, which is the frequency or how frequent those changes are going to be. If you go very low, you're going to just a small waviness, barely visible. If you go higher, you're going to get more dimples like this, which is more or less what you, you can expect from terrain like this. Now, if you are not getting a proper look or can get the idea of how this thing would look if it's bigger, what you can do is click this little button over here, which uh, where, where you can see these nine little tiles. By clicking those, you're gonna multiply this nine times and now you get a much bigger look over how this would look on a much bigger terrain. So as you can see, if you zoom in quite a bit, you can see some rep uh, repetitive uh, look, but the thing is, if you're zooming out so much, you're basically not going to need to <laughs> use the mega scans. But when you come in closer like this, you're starting to get a nice view of the surface. All right, so I'm going to turn it off. And now we take a look at the last of the height noise, which is the plateau. The plateau is basically doing this. It's giving you flat surfaces like this so if this is something that maybe you want to have on your surface then why not use it for, for now i'm just gonna give it back to zero now the second thing here is the reflectance basically you have glossiness so just like in max you can control how glossy you want this to be for example if this is mud 
after rain, you want to have the mud being glossy like this. If this is a uh, mud or dirt in a desert, you probably want to keep it up the, to the glossiness to very low like this and get a very dry look to it. And then the last here we have the placement, which is more or less offset. So if you're in max, you're pretty much accustomed to using the offset for um, textures. When you want to move the texture seam left or right, there we go like this. Also, what you can do here is rotate it as well. So you can rotate it at a certain angle if you need it. All right, so that's the base for the soil mud or the soil mud, not so soil mud, what the hell. Uh, all right, the second thing that we can do here is we can either go ahead and add an additional uh, layer. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's add on that mud, uh, what will look good? We can add these stones or we can add, well, Let's try and mix it up with the one that we just downloaded. I have no idea how this thing is going to look like, so hopefully it looks cool. All right, actually it does look cool. This is uh, more, more of the same, more cracked soil. Awesome. All right, so here's the thing. When you do add a second uh, layer here, you basically have an option to use this as a mask so on top of the all the option that we used as a height blend or height noise in the previous one now you have these options under the mask so the first thing and more important thing is where do you want the mask to be applied do you want it from below or you can choose to uh, apply it from above and see the difference right away as soon as we change it like this now it only applies it to the top portion of here now the thing is that you can move it with the threshold so basically the threshold is moving it upwards or downwards so the more up it is it's going to disappear the lower it goes you get it to look something like this and now in all honesty i'm actually liking how this thing is starting to look because it's mixing between both of the dirts so i'm getting the the details from the new soil mud mixed up with the original ones so for this i can decrease the radius or increase it and the radius basically defines how far the details are going to protrude then we're going to have the details which basically control how much of those details are going to uh, come through from uh, this layer and then you have the opacity, which is more or less self-explanatory. Or how much you can see. If you go low, you make it invisible. If you go high, you make it visible. And you can mix it in the middle to get a more interesting result. Now, the other thing is that you have a height blend. Here, you can use the underlying uh, geometry or the underlying information and that way, basically, when you're stacking one layer on top of the other, it's going to take into account the original geometry from be, uh, below or the information, not geometry, but information, and basically make it so it's higher, like this. And also, here you have the option on how much you want to blur with the underlying layers, or if you want just put it like this so it's purely cosmetic and I put it so it's underlying more so we have a bit more of the original geometry like this well in all honesty with all of these holes not really a fan let's see okay and then we have the uh, original option that we previously ticked on and with the reflectance we can also change the albedo which is basically the diffuse so click on the albedo and you can change what kind of color you want to have for this 
So if you want a more dark color or a lighter color, it all kind of depends on what kind of terrain you're willing to make or you are fishing to make. So like this, I'm gonna on put it on like this and okay, I'm actually okay with how this thing looks. So that was adding normal layers. Now the next thing we can do is add a fill layer. A fill layer is basically a solid layer coming on top of here. So it's basically like a piece of sheet or a sheet of paper. So what you can do here is again control the mask, whether you want it from above or you want it from below. Now this thing I found it uh, found it interesting as of now because it's very e uh, very early in the release of MegaScan Studio. I'm pretty sure that later on I'm gonna find more interesting ways of using it. But so far, the first thing that came into mind is using this as a layer of snow. So for example, if I want to convert my see, uh, my scene or my texture for desert into let's call it a snowy desert then in that case I can use this as a simple white color albedo you can amp it up to white and now I can use the threshold to basically control how much of it I'm gonna cover with snow the radius again as we saw previously controls this but the interesting part is if you decrease the threshold and increase the radius, you basically have uh, a type of effect that would happen with snow that is melting because some of the places are going to have a, a more intense snow or more intense white while the rest is going to be covered with melting snow. So for this, I can use the height blend again, get more height for our snow. As you can see, if, as I'm increasing the underlying, all of these pieces here, like all of these are getting to height, as you can see right here. As it is with uh, low, it's flat. As we add in more height blend, we get those to look like lumps of snow. We can blur with the underlying, underlying uh, information or make it more rough like this. As you can see, it's very, very easy to control and it can give us some amazing results. And now the last thing that I can uh, show here is adding a waterly layer or liquid layer. If you click here, you get to the liquid layer. This layer is a tad bit different than the rest of them. Why? Well some of the options here. For example, first thing you have here in the mask is the opacity. If you decrease the opacity, again, it's quite obvious what happens. The opacity of our layer or our water layer kind of disappears. But what happens is that now we can see we have a lot of uh, shininess. So this is not the way to, I want to go about this. The first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and play around with my threshold on the surface uh, option here. This is basically going to uh, let me control where I want to have my water. And as you can see, as I'm moving this upwards or downwards, I'm controlling where that plane is going to protrude through the surface and where the water is going to show up. As you can see, we have some uh, some indentations in our surface, which allow us to have naturally occurring ponds. So basically in every single place that's underneath uh, that level of that uh, liquid plane, we have a very nice looking uh, pond happening. You can see it over here as a bigger pond and we have all of these little uh, holes filled up with water. And this is very consistent with what happens when snow melts. In all of these places, since the snow has melted up, we can see water. So now what we can do here is control how the water is going to look like. We can choose to go with the radius and 
make sure if it's if we want it to be like a full full on puddle or if we want to have it just in the lower portions with water but in the other places where like it is we still have some of the water look effects like like it's wet on the base so that's a really interesting look but for now i'm going to decrease the radius so i can see the water again and underneath here we have the glossiness for water you can control it if you want to have it really shiny or if you want to have it be flat but let's be honest water is shiny so i want to leave my glossiness over here we have details slider pretty self-explanatory is going to give you details but here really doesn't matter because well it doesn't give give us too much in this case now here's the interesting part when you go come down to turbidity you have surface detail here but basically what this is giving you the option to ch uh, choose is how much we are going to see out of this so for example if i put in the depth to the low you can see that we can ba uh, barely see what the diffuse is on the base uh, on the bottom if we put in more of the depth we have more color coming through so basically if we choose a color and let's say we want to have well let's just make it interesting so we can see it better and choose a very bright color like this in this case we no longer have any uh water <laughs> instead we have this green goo which again interesting if you're making a game in which you have some well i really wouldn't use this for <laughs> any kind of game but other than that you can as you can see you can choose what kind of color you want to have for your water if you uh, decrease the depth you can uh, let the base or the underlying uh, information coming from the layers show up and less of the actual color that we have here in the surface so there we go if we scroll this down both of them to very low and you basically can see the base here but you get the idea that this water is not so healthy for drinking all right, so I'm going to leave this back to something like, yeah. There we go. I like this. And we have some water. And then we have moist, which you can get like this. As you can see, as you're adding more and more moist, it's basically going to start forming up in all the other places and give us that look. You, have, you can have the glossiness the radius again is how much of that moist is gonna catch on the uh, catch on on the neighboring surface you can blur it out if you wish so you don't see it that well defined you can control it how dark that is or how light it is as you can see when you go very light the water you know it's there but it's not very visible when you darken it up, you get a much more dark piece of water or a puddle of water. So with that, we basically have a piece of um, ground or a piece of uh, texture that we can now export and use in our 3D model or uh, 3D modeling uh, software. So for example, now if I want to see how this thing looks on a bigger I'm gonna click here and I'm actually happy with how this thing turned out. All right. And now that we have all of this, I can proceed to either add in any more layers if I want to, or I can proceed and export this. But before I do that, there are just two more things that I want to note. The first thing is over here on the left side, you have this drop down menu. Here, you can basically choose to see all of the different uh, passes or layers 
that we can have here or the channels for basically uh, basically if you choose the albedo you're only going to see what is going to be exported as a diffuse map the specular one is going to give you the specular map the glossiness you can see here the roughness the normal the displacement and the occlusion all of these maps are what consist of the pbr or physically based render uh, rendering um, material so once you have this what you can do is go over to export and now it's going to ask you how you want to name your project you can name it whatever you want then you gotta click here and export location i have like mine like i said to d to megascans repository to export folder and then you go export resolution as we saw previously you can uh, change this anytime but when you're exporting you simply want to go ahead and either choose uh, a 2k 1k 4k or 8k for me i'm going to use a 4k and now if i hit export nothing will happen and the reason for that is because i still haven't chosen any maps to export to choose the maps i can go and click on add map if i want to go one by one or i can click these three little lines over here and then click load defaults for specular so with this i basically have the albedo which is uh, in our case diffuse i want to call it albedo uh, the specular glossiness roughness is not needed because roughness is the pbr uh workflow we have normal displacement and ambient occlusion with all of these you click on export it's going to do the exporting of the maps and as soon as this export thing is finished you have your maps and if i open up the folder i will see that in here now i have all of these maps that i can now take and plug into either Max or Maya or whatever software that you're using and get this exact look inside our um, modeling uh, suit. So as you can see, this is a very, very powerful tool for creating lots of interesting textures. I still haven't uh, covered any of the 3D asset adding um, options for Megascan Studio, but we'll see if you, if you guys like uh, Megascan Studio, I will make a few more videos about it. And well, in all honesty, I will have to take a bit more time myself because it's pretty new. But as you can see, it's a very, very powerful way of creating textures in which you have very much, well, you have total control on how you want everything to look like. And that would be all for this introduction to Megascan Studio video. I know it took a tiny bit more longer than what I was initially expecting to happen, but it's a very interesting piece of software and I really hope that it takes some traction. All right, so for now, I hope you guys had fun and managed to learn something new. If you do have any questions, leave them below. I will meet you in the comment section of the video. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.